Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna be doing my June reading wrap up and this month was quite underwhelming. Well, actually we're in July already and I feel like I already feel so much better about reading than I did last month. I was in the worst slump ever. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it was pretty underwhelming. I read more than I thought I did. I read six books. I honestly thought I was gonna come and do this and it was gonna be like three books because I told myself no matter how much or how little I read, I'm still gonna do these wrap-ups just to like reflect on. But I read six books, so clearly I was reading. I think I just wasn't fully enjoying everything that I was reading, if that makes sense. I'm pretty sure I gave a lot of things four stars this month, but I still look back on the month and I don't know, nothing like sticks out to me that much. I don't know. I think it's also the fact that it's following up from April and May and those were two of like the best reading months of my life, especially April and there were so many new releases. Anyway, I did start off the month strong though with Daisy Jones and the Six. This is a reread, so I already knew that it was gonna be five stars. It was five stars the first time and it was five stars this time. I have now consumed Daisy Jones and the Six in literally every format of media that it exists. I love the TV show, I love the book, I love the audiobook. It's just amazing. This time I was listening along to the audiobook while reading it. The only thing I will say is that if you've watched the TV show, the voices for Billy and Karen in the audiobook just don't make sense anymore if you've watched the TV show. They just... Billy sounds too old and Karen... Karen sounds too... Valley Girl, if that makes sense. Like, because Karen in the TV show is played by Suki Waterhouse and to me it's just like the perfect perfect casting so I was missing that voice. <laughs> this book is basically about a band who is no longer together doing a tell-all interview about their entire career, how they started, when they were touring, all the drama, the writing, the songs, literally everything that they went through. It's just a tell-all interview of all of that and everyone's telling the stories from their different perspectives and giving their own opinions and it's just messy and it just it's amazing. It's so fun, but it also has such emotional moments because Daisy and also Billy, who's another main character of this book, they're both struggling with addiction. They both have such complicated family relationships and just complicated relationships with each other. And, and we just kind of go through how it all started and how everything crashed and burned. And it's just, it's amazing. I remember when I was reading this the first time, I had to keep looking up like, is this real? Is this based on a real story? Is Daisy Jones and the Six a real thing? Like, I don't know, it just felt so real. The characters feel so real. I love this book a lot. I expect to, that's why I reread it. And something about this is just such a good, like, summer read for me, even though nothing about it is, like, specifically summary about it. It just feels so good in the summer. So I'm very happy that I reread that. Obviously, I already said five stars. It will probably always be a five star for me. And this time, I can't believe, but I was like annotating over my annotations. I didn't expect to annotate anything because I annotated so much the first time and I was just so many annotations the second time around too. I think Taylor Jenkins read just never fails to like make me emotional. <laughs> And then on my Kindle, I continued the Boys of Tommen series. I was on Save and Six, and then I went on to Redeeming Six. And these two books are about Joey and Aoife. And Joey is Shannon's brother from the first two books. Shannon's the main character in the first two books. And when it comes to a series explaining what it's about, it's like, I don't want to spoil anything, but basically Binding 13, the whole Boys of Tom and series, it starts out with Shannon who has a really difficult home life and she's like bullied at school, she's abused at home, and those books kind of follow her and how she's overcoming all those obstacles in her life. And then for Saving Six and Redeeming Six, well mostly for Saving Six, it kind of flashes back all throughout Joey's life and we kind of see why Joey is the way that he is. And I don't know why I didn't expect that to happen, but I'm kind of glad that it did. At first I was like, why are we going all the way back? I just want to pick up where we left off. I need to know what happens after this, but it kind of makes sense. And now that I've read Redeeming Six, I'm glad like we went through all of that. These books are really painful and <laughs> they literally ripped my heart out. I can't stress enough, like check the trigger warnings. I think it's even worse for Joey's stories. Like, <sighs> I feel like my complaint about the first two books is always they're too long and they could be shorter and they could be edited better so that it could be shorter because some scenes just I feel like are so unnecessary but 
I think I'm just like overall getting used to the writing so I could tolerate it more but I think she would definitely do well with an editor to just compress the book just a little bit like instead of I don't know how many pages is this one but I know Redeeming Six is like 700 and something pages instead of that it could have been like 600 like I'm not saying cut the book in half or anything but you know 100 pages less I don't know I think that will always be a complaint about all these books although I saw that Taming 7 is only 400 and something pages so maybe that'll be the one that finally isn't filled with unnecessary scenes. <laughs> you see I thought Saving 6 was painful and then I got to Redeeming 6 and it was awful like I did not expect <laughs> Redeeming 6 to make me feel the same way that I felt when I was reading A Little Life like not completely that down but I started to feel that way and I I was like I need to know what happens and I just can't stop the series here I have to know what happens to Joey and to Aoife and but it really did start to just make me feel a little down and sad all the time and I think that's also a reason why I took a break from reading in June and I just wasn't in the mood to read anything because Redeeming Six just broke me so i've already mentioned that redeeming six is like over 700 pages and i remember at around the 400th page nothing good was happening like still nothing good was happening to these people they were still struggling so much and we're like 400 pages in i'm like wow they have not had a happy moment in 400 pages i don't know how much of this i could take <laughs> yeah it's really insane and when people say check the trigger warnings it's not a joke and I probably should have taken it more seriously. Not that I thought it was a joke, it's just, I always think I can handle it. That's what it is. I think I'm stronger than I am, and I'm clearly not because these books will put me in a bad mood for like weeks. <laughs> for Redeeming Six, my biggest complaint was that I wish there was more of the ending. Like we have 700 pages of pain, and then there's like 20 pages of like, okay, I have some hope that things are gonna get better like slightly and it's just i wish there was a little bit more of that or a little bit more of the healing process being shown i don't know it's like you go through 700 pages of all of that and you you just give me like two seconds of happiness i wanted a little bit more of that but i also understand why she wrote it that way there was just a lot to go through with these characters. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna read Taming 7 yet because I didn't want Taming 7 to like end on a cliffhanger and then I have to wait for the next one. Like Binding 13 and Saving 6 kind of ended on cliffhangers. But then I heard that Taming 7 is like Claire and Gibbsy's only book. So if that's true, I might as well go ahead and read it. But I don't, I don't know. Overall, I did need a break from that very painful world though. So I will get back to it eventually i don't know when i'm looking for some pain and sadness but for right now i can't i gave saving six 4.25 stars and then i still have not rated redeeming six because i love those characters so much but i kind of hated the book i don't know how to explain that it's hard to explain <laughs> like i felt so much emotions but I didn't exactly love the book, you know, so I'm very conflicted with reading that one and I kept saying like, oh, I'll read it later, I'll read it later, and I still have not rated it. So if I ever do, maybe at the end of the year when I'm doing a wrap up, I'll let you know, but I don't have a rating for Redeeming Six because that one was by far like the darkest, most emotional, painful, heartbreaking, gut-wrenching. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. So, um... Yeah, Saving Six, 4.25, and Redeeming Six, I don't know. So after all that pain and suffering from Redeeming Six, I took a long break from reading. Actually, it was just a week. I'm being dramatic. But then I did a little reading vlog where I kind of wanted to read for 24 hours, but I was also very busy. So it was like reading for 24 hours while I'm being productive. And I read these two books, which after a week without reading, I just really really wanted to just sit and read but at the same time i couldn't really do that anyway the first book i read in that vlog is the dead romantics by ashley poston and honestly this one i'm 
very disappointed by. My expectations were high because of the seven year slip. That was the first book I ever read by Ashley Poston and it was just so good. It's actually one of my all time favorite books ever. And this one just was not as good. But I've also realized that I do enjoy Ashley Poston's writing. So I would still like to continue reading her books. I know she has a new one coming out or it already came out. And I would probably go read that one too, but I didn't really love this one. So that's slightly disappointing, but the book overall is okay and I would still recommend. It's about a ghostwriter who doesn't believe in love anymore after something happens to her and she has this like power to see ghosts. It's like people die and then they go to her in like her world she could see them, she could talk to them, whatever. They talk to her to like resolve issues and then they go die. <laughs> they go to the afterlife, I guess. It, she's like the in-between life and death, if that makes sense. So she is a ghost writer and she also talks to ghosts, she sees ghosts. And so a guy that she likes or is, in, is falling in love with is in that in-between stage and yeah, it kind of just goes through the motions while she's also trying to like finish this book and something else is going on in her life. There's a lot of death and <laughs> obviously, like I can't blame the book for, like I can't pick up the dead romantics and like be mad that there's a lot of death going on in here, but it, it definitely did bring my mood down a little bit. I think I just wasn't in the mood for that. It's on me. It's not the book's fault. I would still recommend it. I think someone would enjoy this. So it kind of just depends on what you're in the mood for. I remember there were also some parts of this book where I was kind of bored, which I do not like describing books as boring because I guess they usually just aren't. Even when books are really mundane, I have the ability to enjoy them. Like Sally Rooney writes the most mundane books ever and I, I've given them five stars. So thinking a book is boring is just, I'm always like baffled when I think a book is boring because what? Anyway, I rated this book 3.5 stars, which as you could tell is really not that bad. It's still very decent. It's just definitely not my favorite thing ever. It was a little bit underwhelming and I had way higher expectations for it. I think most of my stars came from the fact that I really liked the ending. And there are a couple moments in here. There are a couple things in here that I like underlined and stuff. So it has its moments, but overall, not my favorite. The next book I read in this vlog is The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. I feel like if you've ever read anything by Sarah Adams and you've enjoyed it, you would enjoy this too. This book is about a girl named Nora and she is a public relations manager. She's like an agent for sports people, <laughs> athletes. That's what they're called. I'm not really doing well right now, but anyway, she is a PR agent for athletes and she just recently got a new client and it turns out that that client is her ex-boyfriend from college. And when she goes in for the first meeting, she knows that she's meeting with him, but he doesn't know. And he is still like angry about the breakup. So he doesn't want her to be his PR manager and he just decides to be petty and she's like i'm gonna do all these things that's gonna make her quit i'm gonna make her life miserable and yeah it progresses from there it kind of gets very insane from there which i didn't expect because i didn't read the back of the book and i'm not gonna say it either you should go into it blind i really enjoyed this the only thing i will say is that nora the main character she's very quirky and she's strange and i feel like if you don't like the quirky girl main character type of thing do not read this this is gonna be awful for you. I know a lot of people hate it and it's like they can't read past it. So if you're one of those people, don't read this because she is very quirky. She's very weird. As much as I enjoyed this, there would be times where I'm like reading and I'm like, I'm really into it. This is great. This is normal. And then she would say something like, see you soon, raccoon. And I'm just like, girl, what? <laughs> I think it's put there for comedic relief, but um, it could definitely be annoying to some people. I wasn't that bothered by it. I still gave this book four stars. I, I liked it, I enjoyed it. It's just, if that's a thing for you, the quirky girl main character, if you don't like that, don't read this. She's gonna piss you off. I could just very much look past it, like easily. And I liked everything else, so 
I also never read the first book in this series, which is The Cheat Sheet, and I'm pretty sure all of the friends that pop up in this book, all of his friends are from that book, and I had no idea who they were. I just knew them as, oh, his friends, it was great. But I think it would have been a little bit of a more of an emotional connection to see the people from the first book if I read it, but I never did. So that could be fun if you liked that book. It would be fun to see them in this one too. But I guess I just also wanted to say if you never read that one, you will be completely fine reading this. I had no troubles with loving the whole friendship dynamic, even though I didn't really know them. So the last book I read also on my Kindle was The Housemaid's Secret again took like a week break from reading and then i picked back up with this one the housemaid's secret is the second book in a trilogy i don't exactly know how trilogies work when it comes to um mystery thriller type books because they're not 100 connected i don't remember much about the first book and maybe that's why i don't see the connections but i read the housemaid a really long time ago i read that one five stars and when I went into this one, I didn't know anyone. I couldn't see anything in common except I think they're both based in New York. So I don't exactly know. I don't know if they're just in a series because they're all about housemaids or if they're actually connected and I just don't remember anything. How do I really explain what a mystery thriller is about? Because these are the ones you really have to go into blind. Um, it's about a housemaid who has a secret obviously, but the people she works for are like crazy and then there's some issues with her boyfriend. Although one thing I will say, and I think this is what knocked the stars off for me is that I felt like her boyfriend was so useless, like so pointless to the story. I was waiting for the moment for Frieda McFadden to say, the boyfriend did this and then he did that and something happened with him in the past and blah, blah. I don't know. I just thought something insane was gonna happen with him and just, he was just there. And I'm like, what, what was the point? you know but i was still very intrigued by this book and i literally read it in under 24 hours i would still recommend it especially if you are enjoying like the first one i would say go on to the second one i've just heard that the third one isn't really that good it's like really slow until the end and that's when it picks up but i don't actually know because i haven't read it yet and i have no intentions of reading it i think i'm ending this series here for me but yeah, I thought it was really good and entertaining. I thought it was messed up, very messed up, but what Freedom McFadden book isn't? Did I guess anything? Not exactly, but I guess when the plot twist like came around, it was like not that shocking. It was like, holy shit, but it wasn't that shocking, you know? I don't know, I think I'm getting a little bit more used to Freedom McFadden's writing specifically. Once you read a lot of her books, they start to not blend together, but they you kind of start to have expectations and, you know. So this one was a 4.25 stars for me. The first one was a five star. So obviously not as good as the first one, but it was still good. So I would recommend it. Anyway, those are my six books that I read in June. Uh, nothing that great. Daisy Jones and the Six was amazing, but I read that already, so... I don't even count that. It, I don't know, June was underwhelming and depressing for when it comes to reading. Like the two books that I like rate highly, they put me in terrible moods. And then the other two books that I thought would bring my mood back up, they were kind of like, the rule book was a four star, but it's just, you know what it is? It's not that memorable. And that's the thing about a lot of rom-coms, they're good and I rate it for what it is. It is a four star, but they're not that memorable, you know? Like two weeks from now, am I gonna be thinking about Nora from the rule book? Probably not. <laughs> I don't even remember the guy's name. Oh my God, Derek. I do remember his name. <laughs> and then yeah, The Housemaid's Secret was really good, but definitely not Freedom McFadden's best. So even the things that were good, there's just something that's like, eh. Kind of an underwhelming reading month, but it's okay because I am filming this on July 3rd and I've already read two books that I really like, so we're coming back. I'm getting out of this book slump one way or another. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe for more. I think I want to do reading vlogs where I try to get out of slump or where I read only on my Kindle for a week because I've been, I don't know what it is, I'm really into my Kindle right now. Or vlogs where I read 
only summary books because that's something that I also noticed about my June. I didn't really read any summary books, which I don't know why, but I should get to those because there are a couple of them that I really want to read. So if you like reading vlogs, subscribe because those will be coming soon. So I'll see you soon. Bye.